And they wanna live this life on purpose Go find some purpose so welcome to Purpose Talk episode three. I'm really, really excited about this episode. And um, we have two important guests, and we are going to be tackling a sensitive but well needed conversation in our community. And this is our opinion, it's our facts. It's not factual for everyone, but it's factual for us. So, yeah, enjoy the episode. Let me introduce to you my first guest, and this is Jadine. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and we have Bonnie. Hey, what's up? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so they're my two guests, and we're just going to get straight into it because, yeah, that's what we do on Purpose Talks. So good evening and welcome to everyone, wherever you are. Sit back, enjoy, get your cup of tea, get your notepads, whatever you need to do to just listen to what we've got to say. And I hope you really enjoy the show. So today we're going to talk about Is Love a Choice? And I think it's a really, really important topic because a lot of times I think when growing up in the West Indian um, culture, we are not really showing, shown sorry, the right kind of love. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I grew up in a single um, household and then I went into the care system. So I didn't see mum, dad, um, siblings and love and grandma and rice and peas on Sunday. And there's other people that I grew up in school and I saw them having their mum and dad come to parents evening and that was the normality of life. But who chooses what is normal? And that's what we really want to tackle today. Was what I had normal, what they had normal, what what you guys have is that normal and whose choice is it? So just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and we start off with you buddy. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well I'm in my late thirties. Um Originally, I'm from Guyana. I came here uh, when I was around 13. Um, I now work with kids that with uh, um, special needs, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, yeah, and I'm fascinated about fashion. So, yeah. brilliant! That's yeah, really it's nice. Quite creative. <laughs> That's good. I love creativity. It's such yeah. a good thing. And what about yourself, JD? Tell us a little bit about you. Um, so in my late twenties, um, I am a prison officer. Um, I was born and raised here in London, but my family are from St Kitts and Nevis in Montserrat. And that's about it. Yeah. Cool, <laughs> really interesting. So different kind of backgrounds, different kind of upbringings, and I'm just gonna fire with some questions. So you said you didn't grow up in London, you wasn't born over here. Oh. So well, how was your upbringing um, abroad? Um, so in Guyana, it's like. A Caribbean. Um, I was brought up in a country area. It was, it was completely different. Um, um, growing up in Guyana, what can I say? It, was, it had its pros and its cons. Um, more so, I, I didn't really... I mean, being yourself back home was kind of a hard thing. I mean, coming over here, and the difference is, is kind of large. You know? It's just... Um, it's. I don't know. I did, I did enjoy life. There's no, there's no place like home. There's mm-hmm. never no place like home. But obviously, coming to a new, like, environment, a new country, it was kind of like a culture shock for me. Like, but you learn to adapt and endorse and, not endorse, what am I saying? <laughs> adapt and, you know, uh, embrace new culture. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. Cool. Can you elaborate? Did you grow up with your parents? Did you grow up in your grandparents? My grand. My nan. So I came over here. I grew up with my nan over here. My nan, my mom was still in uh, Guyana, so she came over here. She she had me in Guyana, but she spent most of her life in in Guyana. But then she came back over here after. Okay. And then yeah. And more grandparents growing up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And what about you, Jane? Um. So South London all my life. <laughs> 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 yeah, South London. That's it. Um. So I've only ever known. London culture really but growing up I was very much to myself anyway so I fought for myself I wasn't easily influenced so regardless as to what other people were doing I was very much Jadine and thinking like Jadine and not so much the South London way or the London way in general so I don't know if there really is much of a cultural shock for me because I kind of created my own independent culture for myself that I I lived by. Cool. Really interesting. It's different. And who did you actually grow up with in your household? Oh, so from just my mother. So single parent household. My mother and I have an older sister as well, seven years between us. Um, but over the last, I moved out this year. But prior to that, um, I say what about thirteen years of just me and my mother alone. 
So yeah, just me and my mother and my cat. <laughs> cool. so one more quick question before we dive into the games or before you guys ask me a question um do you think when you was growing up that it was the right love that was shown to you so what you saw not the love that you do have now but what you saw when you was growing up was that the love that you class classified as love um, um. As opposed to your parent loving you growing up or any just love around the loving environment was that well a loving environment? I grew up in a an environment where there was kind of like there was abuse in the household. Like mm -hmm. my stepdad and my mom, there was always ruffling and tuffling back in back in whole Caribbean. But it's just like my mom was always strong. She's always a strong character. She remained she's just my inspiration. Like there's no one like her, but like despite all the fact of uh, abusive uh, situation that's happened she she still managed to just hope like never gave us up you know what i mean and just kept going you know um uh as opposed to uh um coming over here also like living with my nan it was the same there's, there's always love there there's no, never you know what i mean they they always held us and never you know thought that oh let's just give them up because of a certain way they are or, or stuff like that um yeah i really appreciate and i look up to my my nan and my mom as my mom and dad because obviously dad was absent he was uh can you swear he was like, a you can do you like <laughs> he was just like a dickhead <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but my nan and my 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 mom are really strong women and i really you know my nan even like Oh, hardly like single handedly looked after like ten kids on our own. Uh, my dad, he 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 left my mum when I was around three, four. Okay. Uh, went to the states, met someone else. And as we were growing up, um, that's when he wanted to know, and it like in my teens, he wanted to reach back out to me and my sibling just to try to rekindle where he left off. But that didn't go that well. So. <laughs> cool. Interesting, definitely. And yourself, JD? Um, so I was very much up underneath my mother. She had me like that, and I very much enjoyed it when I was younger. So there was a lot of love between her, between my mother and I. Um, people would more or less consider me her shadow. I was always with her. Um, into teen years, not so much. Not because I necessarily changed. I think because I was so up and underneath my mother she wanted me to stay like that until i got older so as i got older the love for the what i felt from the initial kind of love i received from my mother had definitely changed and we we've we've grown apart and we we don't really speak um as much we're quite with our relationship has changed but prior to that there was a lot of love i've got everything not only that i needed but everything that i wanted um like i said she had me like her little handbag um as for father he wasn't around so i don't know any love from him um, as for family, I feel like it, although I was very aware of my mother's side of family and I did see them, um, it was all I can really remember growing up as me and my mother, even though my sister lived at home with us, I can only really remember me and my mum. So I'd say the only love I knew back then prior to adolescence age was my mum. It was good love. It was nice. We, we got on really well back then. So it's positive. Cool. Thank you so much for both of you for sharing. It's not easy when we're sharing about our past love and what love is and what we um, look at as love and what society says love is. Um, but so it's really interesting and thank you guys for sharing. Um, do you guys have any quick question for myself before we get into our little game? Not at the moment, not the moment. Okay, cool. We're going to jump right into the game and the game comes before the hard questions. So I kind of think let's just get a little bit relaxed and kind of do what we need to do. So we're going to go straight into this game that you guys are going to play against each other. Okay, cool. So we're going to play this little game before we get into the hard questions because I think it's important and it will make sense at the end of why we play this particular game or before we get into the questions, it will make sense. So you have literally a 30 seconds. I'm going to be quite harsh or 40 seconds maybe so what you have to do is open up the pack of skittles mm -hmm. open up these little containers that i've given you and you've got to put two of the same color in each pack in the space of 30 seconds okay but you can't have nothing left oh. 
and you've only got 10 containers and I don't know how many suits are in the pack. And you've got to make sure the right colours are in the same pack and only two at a time. So what if they're not the right, right amount in there? That's, you've got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the challenge? Yeah. Yeah? I'm ready. Wait, and we're against each other, so we can't actually work collectively. No, like, you're oh. separate. You've got your own thing there, babe. <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking if it doesn't work out, we help each other, but we can't. Oh, okay. we remain the Skittles. Oh, yeah. Right. you got to figure it out. Maybe we can. Maybe it's a game. To so we're not opponents. You definitely <laughs> are. I think it's a th game to bring us together. Just we'll see. Oh. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Okay, ready, steady, go. I'll tell you when the time's up. <laughs> Could be faster than that. <laughs> Ten seconds have gone already. 30 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds remaining. I'll give you an additional 10 seconds. <laughs> Nine. The whole packet needs to be finished. That can't, that's impossible. You gotta try, keep going, don't give up. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Four. <You're just> <laughs> Three. <laughs> Two <laughs> and one. Stop, put them back. Stop, stop, stop. Put it down. No eating, no cheating, <laughs> no skills in your hands. <laughs> Thank you so much, JD and Buddy, for participating in the game. And you're correct in saying it's impossible. But the purpose behind this game is everyone knows this purpose talk and everything has a purpose. And the purpose behind this is why we're going to really go deeper into is love a choice and who you love is it a choice because many times people expect us to fit into a box and they have this idea that each color must stick with their color and in a container and they're in a rush to put things together and actually sometimes we don't fit into the box just because we have the same hair or the same color or the same ethnic background or we grew up in the same household and who says um, that we need to go into a box like this yeah. society teaches us that actually society should not have a right of who we love how we love and why we love and we've got to come out of a stereotype of saying this is the way it has to be done because it looks right what looks right and what feels right is two different things and that's something that we need to get used to without explaining ourselves and unapologetically being our authentic selves I want to be a rainbow and that's my choice and that's my purpose and no one can tell me I need to fit into the pink box because you're 40 plus, that's what happens, that's what the, you know when you go for a job interview, they say what's your ethnic background, what's your sexuality, yeah. I always put other because it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not. I don't want to fit into a category no more. I want to walk out for my divine purpose. And to do that, you need to stand out and be bold. So you, it was impossible for you to do that because guess what? You are unique in yourselves and you're unique as a couple. So you're never going to fit in. There's never going to be enough time to fit in because you're born to stand out. So that is the purpose behind the whole game. Nice. <laughs> cool. okay. So Thanks. let's get right into how did you guys meet? Who are you to each other? And how do you find it being two young black women in society? Um, so who we are to each other, we are a couple in a relationship. Um, how we met online, something I said I'd never do. Um, <laughs> we met on an online app. Um, what was your other questions? How are you, like being a young black girl, because you're only in your 20s, mm. um, how did you find like, so to speak, I don't like the word coming out, mm -hmm. but coming out, um, was it normal? Did you always know that you was this way? Did you? Was it a feeling? Did yeah. you always hide it? So for me, I've never actually come out. There's been no coming out. Um, I've always been quite stubborn and I just do things how I want to do them. I don't feel like I owe anyone um, that of me to to come out. But I've, I've always known. I kept it to myself. Um, I'd say the time I can remember actually verbalising it to anyone was when I was 13. 
Um, and I remember I'd be praying on it because I am a born again Christian. Um, I was praying on it. I didn't know why I felt this way. Why do I feel this attraction to some females? What is going on? Um, and I wasn't even interested in like sexually active or interested in, in dating at all back then. I was just young and innocent, 13, always at church every Sunday, every Friday, choir rehearsal. That was my, my life, going to school, coming back. Um, and suddenly I was feeling these feelings. And I, I do believe it probably started before 13, but the time I can remember actually verbalizing it, I was, thir I was 13. Um, and it was in school to someone else who had come out as gay. And it just felt comfortable to have that conversation with them. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, there's been no coming out for me. I just, I do what I feel is best for me. Um, the only reason it's it's become anything now and a lot of the people I know are aware that I'm in a same-sex relationship is because now is the time, as of late last year, that I felt comfortable enough to live in my truth and do what was right for me. Prior to this, I've only dated men. Um, but there was always that part of me that always wanted to know what it would be like to be with a female, if that was what was right for me. I didn't feel like men were making me happy. Um, and I always knew that I was attracted to females as well. So I thought, why not? And I got tired of feeling guilty just because I'm a Christian. Um, I've spent too many years crying about my sexuality, feeling guilty, praying that I don't end up in hell um, to keep caring at this point when I am in my late 20s. I just thought I could be missing out on my happiness if I continue to worry so much so that's when I took myself on a lesbian dating app and I met Bonnie um and yeah I've been happier than I feel I have with anyone or any male since sounds like love sounds amazing um sticking to you for a bit um yeah you touched upon that you grew up in a Christian household and um we know as, like, I'm a born again as well. Mm -hmm. So we know how much the faith disagrees yeah. with this kind of love. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say the church disagrees more than the faith disagrees because we have to learn to separate certain things. So the church will preach about the um, unforbidden love, so to speak, but then they also preach about the agape love, which then contradicts itself, so, so to speak, because the agape love, for those who don't know, is the love above all loves. And if you're sitting here saying this is a love above all love, do you fit into agape love then and not the church love? So I think people need to be really um, clear of who they are and what they're saying to people that have been struggling, I guess, with your sexuality to come clear, clean, I guess, and out there. I know you say you're not out there, but you do what you like. But I think there's so many people that most probably in the church or in some form of relation that don't feel right and um, what advice would you give them, especially it being faith-based yourself, to saying that these feelings, how do you merge these feelings? How do you cope with these feelings without before you decided to download the app? Um, I, I will say you are who you are and that there is no changing it. If you feel a certain way, you can't shift your feelings or turn them off. It's not a light switch. Um, I'd say learn to, I guess, uh, circle yourself with with people who are embracive, um, who will embrace you and embrace your differences that are not judgmental and do what you feel in your heart makes you happy. That's what I had to do is allow myself, because I, I fought with it for ages, because there was a time period where I was speaking to girls, but I always said um, I would never be in a relationship with them um, because it, it was just too, too stressful, given I still wanted to draw closer to God. And I thought, how can I possibly draw closer to God if I'm out here living in a sin how can I possibly do that um but then for me it was just getting to a point of what makes me happy do I want to live in regret of not at least giving it a go and seeing where it goes um and allow myself to also be open-minded to whatever God wants to do in my life thereafter um so my advice would just be to love on yourself and trust your your own judgment um yeah, and be kind to yourself because it's not easy. And I know a lot of people do think it is a choice and it's not. And when I look back on how I allowed myself to get down and out, <coughs> literally on bended knee, over my feelings towards um, women, um, it's just not worth it living my life feeling like that. So I chose my own happiness. So yeah, I just say surround yourself with, with positive people that will re embrace you regardless because I'm happy to surround myself around people who even if they don't necessarily agree with my choices they can still accept it and learn to to, to love me regardless 
um and i'd say i'd advise people to do the same cool really great advice thank you so <laughs> much and what about yourself honey how do you feel how do i feel I, well first of all um i came out i sat my mom down in my room and i wrote a letter <laughs> telling her like listen mom I, sorry about to tell you what i like girls yeah. this is what i was about 16 15 16 and she's like, I gave her the letter. I was just sweating. I was like, anxious and everything. She read the letter. I was like, I knew. I'm like, you knew this. And you couldn't know. like, <laughs> yeah. And basically, uh, my my family's been really support supportive towards my my sexuality, you know. And I couldn't be more grateful to have such a supportive family. Um, I have uh, dated a lot more. I've been more experienced, obviously, in dating women than than she has. Um, yeah. Um, it's not easy. I mean, it's more, I, th- I reckon it's more intense, like dating a woman, like definitely um, ups and downs. But what was the other question? <laughs> how did you meet JD? And how did oh, me and her was uh, on the app. Um, it was it was first of all when I first met her, she was like, oh, she's she's alright. <laughs> 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 no, it was, it was it was it was different from all the other. Um, dates I've been on or relationships I've been in she's just very different in comparison so I mean we move quite fast but it's it's all for the right reasons I mean we're at a good spot now a good time in our life where we just enjoy each other company it's all my my family and friends really appreciate her I mean she's a great person great soul and I could not ask for anything better right now she's she's lovely to be around yeah, we're definitely moving at a pace that's right for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It suits us. So we're not rushing anything, but we're also not deliberately taking our time. It's whatever feels right for, for our relationship. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like Purpose Talks will be hosting your wedding. Like, <laughs> <you know? Yeah. laughs> it sounds phenomenal, <laughs> to be honest. And, um, you know, it is something that's not really touched upon in the black culture. Yeah. It is something I find, and obviously being a black um, female, that it's not really discussed, it's not really spoken about in schools, it's not really spoke about in coaches, it's not spoken about in church, it's not spoken about in household. It's literally, I find, growing up, it's man, woman, create child. Mm. So you're not allowed to create love. You're allowed to create a system that's been working so well for everybody else. But um, for me, I'm like, as a black woman, do you guys find it more difficult maybe in people accepting you. I know you said your mum is accepting you, but I'm talking about society. When you go out, the people look at you if you're hugging or kissing or I might just really old school and actually it's all accepted now. And No, I, I, I notice it looks more than Bonnie does. I don't know if it's because I'm like new to this or yeah. or what she's more um, oblivious to it. I definitely notice the, some looks, especially from older women. Yeah. They were always, I think just based off how Bonnie dresses in comparison to me alone, even if we're not holding hands, we could just be walking out of the lift and there's stairs, just eyes on us. Um, but I don't know. Some people are very embracing. Uh, like if we go to a specific space, like if we go to a bar, for example, um, you get some nice complimentary people. They'll be like, oh, you're such a lovely couple. You're a beautiful couple. Um, when we went on our travels as well, people, we went to Italy uh, not too long ago and people were very um, embracing over there. Um, but I don't know. I, 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 I will say as a female, I feel like you get it easier than if I was a black male. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't really, I haven't experienced anything negative yet, but again, I'm still very new in this environment. This, I don't really like to consider myself as part of the community, but part of the community in, in the eyes of the world, then yeah, I'm very new to it. So I don't know, Bonnie's experience might be a lot more harsher. Um, well, not really. Well, I want an experience back with the uh, in an ex, um, like Jamaica, for example, like the Caribbean. I find that it's really hard, like being yourself um, mm-hmm. in that kind of environment because you get s- so much stigma thrown at you. It's just like, it's just different. Mm-hmm. I mean, and a perfect example was like when I was over there, like a lot of these guys oh you're batty girl you're this you're that mm-hmm. it was it was just different it was just strange it was just you know so uncalled for but then they just know what they know nobody's traveled so you're ignorant so, to your environment or what you know you know so it's not really but yeah i have a f- uh somebody that i do know like she her mom's a um her mom's really deep into the church and and faith is very deep so 
she can't really be herself um, uh, when she goes around her mum. She can't really be her total self, um, which I find hard sometimes. Um, yeah. Um. Cool. So I know sometimes people will say, like, I've been around all different people, all different kinds, and I'm very blessed to be around them because I feel like I definitely have a non-judgmental so, and I'm more inquisitive of why people make these decisions and choices, and is it a choice? You know, um, something someone had asked me before, so if they were born this way, and I don't like that stereotype, right, hopefully I'm not offending anybody, then how do we create more lives? How does the world go on? If everyone was to say I'm a lesbian or everyone would say I'm gay, then how do you then make more children in the world and do you feel as a um do you class yourself as a gay couple or just a couple just a couple okay me. so as a couple do you want to have children and do you think it'd be the right kind of love to bring the children into that environment i do because i'm very passionate about this question and i think some i think with the way that the world is and especially with some people in the lgbt community and how they think and how passionate they are about their opinions. Even me, in recent times, people seeing that I am in a same-sex relationship, they seem to think that I should think like them, and I don't. Mm. Um, I definitely believe that children should be raised, or you should make the effort to raise your children in a two-parent household um, consisting of mum and dad. I believe that you should not be selfish in um, deliberately depriving your child of a father or of a mother just because you're in a same-sex relationship. And that was also one of the things that, put me off initially of being in one because I thought I really want to be a mother um, and I don't want to deprive my child of a father um, just because of my own personal choices that's not fair to say that love is love and as two people we can give our child's love isn't justified to me um, there's things as mothers that we cannot show our children um, because we're only mothers not fathers as well and vice versa for um, same sex male couples and wanting to have children um, so for me, and we have had this conversation as well, I personally, although I, I still want to have children, but I would need to know the father very, very, very well, and I would still want him to be as actively involved as possible. I would want my child to know this is your, you're blessed to have two mothers, and you have a father, and I would love my child to be involved. That That is ideally the plan for me anyways, I would not want to not right to deprive your child just because I want to have a child so. oh, interesting answer um but definitely one to be respected and mm. um, what about yourself how do you feel about just you and Jaden having a child with no father um, well, with what she's saying um I mean I grew up, grew up without a father so I wouldn't want my child to not know who the father is I mean fatherly love is always is always good to to have that in in, in any aspect um um, yeah, my uncles has been like father figures around me growing up, so um, I wouldn't say no to that. Yeah. Okay, so children are on the table, but yeah. still having a father. Yeah. And I think that's so important and so kind to say, because you're right, we shouldn't deprive anyone from having any form of relation, so to speak. And a lot of us, yeah, don't have our fathers around or haven't had our fathers around. And that's the father's choice. But if we can create lives with a man and a woman that want to be parents... Mm -hmm. That is so important because I feel like there's so much brokenness out there anyway. Why add to the brokenness yeah. if you don't have to? You know, I think even whether you're in the same sex or different sex relationship, it doesn't matter. I don't think you should create life um, unless you know the two people, the two adults are willing to help that life have a successful life yeah. in their purpose. Yeah. So I think that's so, so important. So, yeah, it's lovely to hear that. And you said that you don't think the same way as anyone in that community and I think that's the same thing in the box like people put all gays and lesbians in the same color like oh my god if they're gay they must think that they must think one way yeah. <laughs> yeah and I hate that it's I crazy. hate it it's crazy because I always like it's like um when I go to Brixton for example I don't go often but when I do yeah. um I'd walk down the streets and well I'm impressed and I think <laughs> 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 they just 
talking to me. I was like, it's hi, <laughs> kind of thing. Or, you know, I meet somebody just casually, and the first thing they assume is that I buy weeds and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I don't even smoke. Yeah, it's so, okay, so annoying. Much. Like, stop putting me in your box. Like, <laughs> take me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay to be me, you know. I'm quite right. that kind of anything that happens to me, whatever knocks I have, mm. I wake up the next day and I'm I'm up and I'm ready and I'm bouncing. Like, I'm like yeah. an ADHD child. Like, mm. I'm just ready to get on with the next thing. And I think it's so nice to embrace your truth mm. regardless of what people got to say, you know. And I feel like sometimes as women, and I have to always go back to my coach because I only know to be a black woman. I don't know how it feels to be anything else. Mm. Um, there is this kind of like thing on thing on us like there's this big expectation especially like myself like being a christian woman with locks and her tongue pierces there's so much judgmental things that come with these things and it's like actually i'm just my unique self and i'm not gonna apologize for you being offended for my purpose (laughs) that's something you gotta take up with jesus (laughs) (laughs) you gotta go take that up with him you understand i think too many times we're apologetic for things we shouldn't be apologizing for Mm -hmm. and actually I said to myself the other day when I was thinking about this interview and I was like, um, I'm quite open and quite bold and I'm glad that you guys are being open and transparent because there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. Yeah. There's somebody out there that's in their room today or whatever they are and they're thinking, I can't be my unique self. I remember four or five years ago, I never ever thought I could have my own podcast. I thought, I'm stuck in a rut. I'm st- I need to just pray every single day and, you know, don't you dare come out of that prayer box. And I think it's out of your comfort zone is where you find your purpose. So you learn a lot of things. So I think you guys both have expressed that you've learned a lot of things growing up and seen different kinds of love. And from the lessons of love, you've learned to love each other. And I think that's the key thing for me. It's not about the sexuality. Mm. It's about... Am I good enough to be loved the way I deserve to be loved? And I think that's what people have to understand in this world. It's not about do I deserve to be loved the way the world tells me, but how do I deserve to be loved to how I deserve it? So I wake up every morning and I do words of affirmation. I'm like, I'm good enough. I'm smart. I'm powerful. I'm purposeful. And sometimes we've got to speak things over our life. So it's an encouragement for me to think that you can come out and be so bold about who you are and don't feel sorry like don't apologize to anyone for it like i just feel like it's none of your business kind of thing. Right. yeah it's none of your business so my biggest thing is being a good person yeah that's what gets me through is knowing are you a good person do you try and be a good person or a better person every day yep i'm not harming anyone yeah, happiness is the key mainly mm. i mean if you're happy you're happy in whatever you do then that's the main thing that it's not yeah. to anyone trust me all about character it's about your character your character makes room for you you know i really believe that like when people see you and you're manageable you're respectable you're dressed a certain way you talk a certain way they're not really worried about what you do in your bedroom (laughs) i mean it shouldn't even be a question it should be off limits you know so yeah but do you guys now have anything for me before we kind of wrap up in our last bit of the statement of this podcast (laughs) <laughs> so uh, what advice would you have for somebody that's coming out um be it that is if you've got ch- 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 children like what would you advise them if they love a same sex okay <laughs> interesting question what I advice people like you guys have kind of touched upon is be happy be yourself like if you're not happy your children are not happy and i can look at it in a relationship with man and woman some people stay together because that's what society says to do mm-hmm. and it's more damaging to stay with your partner to just fit into a box. I feel live your true authentic self no matter the cost because it costs yeah. you more to lie. You know, like when you've got a lie, you've got to remember that lie and then you've got to lie upon that lie and the lie, the lie. It's just a lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not a life. A lie. Yeah, yeah, you've got to ask yourself, do I want to live a lie or a life? I want a life. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I advise anyone, go live your life yeah. <laughs> unapologetically in your purpose. So yeah, that would be my advice to them. Nice. I know I had a question, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I do have a question. <laughs> I can't remember my question. Hmm. That's cool. I'm sure at some point <laughs> it might come back to you. Yeah, but yeah, I just feel like in life in general, we all are going to face obstacles, whether it's our sexuality, whether it's the way we love, the way we dress, the way we act, the way we speak, our complexion, yeah. our size, <laughs> everything has a, um, someone's going to question us. Yeah. I think the purpose of life is about having a solution. 
It's not about worrying about, oh, that's going to cause problems in this life or this is going to cause problems in that relationship or it's going to cause problems for that person. As long as you have the solution and the solution makes you happy and you're taking up, if you are a Christian or you do believe in God or you don't, whoever you believe in your maker is, it's personal. And I think that's what people have to realise, your relationship, even your relationship here, you both bring something personal to the relation. Mm -hmm. You're you're not, you are one. And I hate the saying where people say, oh, they should both bring a 50-50 to the relationship. I don't believe that at all. And advice I've ever to give to you lot personally is never go into this relationship or don't be in this relationship only giving 50-50. Mm -hmm. Because my thing is, if you're only giving 50% of this relationship, who are you giving the other 50% to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. got to go in a relationship with 100, 100. It is equal all the way down the line. You might not do it the same way, but equally you've got to be passionate about that thing. You know, Don't ever let someone else steal that 50% because that's going to be that 50% comes into guilt, denial, depression, stress. Like, oh my God, I don't think this is the right thing. Oh my God, what's Sally going to say? Oh my God, Jim said that last week. Yeah. You've got to start doubting yourself. Yeah. You know, But if you know you have a partner that you can truly speak to, um, on a deeper level and say, do you know what? This is what we want. This is what we're going to do. And there's not many relationships in South London, because that's where we're from, that um, you can look at as a young couple and say, they've been together for 10 years, 20 years, you know, I've seen them work out with their six kids and whatever, they're married and happily doing this and that. So I feel like the next generation coming up, as I don't want to touch too much on different generations, but we need to show them love. We, we look out on the road. Every day we're hearing a young person dying. Yeah. Something tragic is happening. And I think because where's the love in the world? Yeah. It's disappeared. Yeah. So if we can show love in any unique way that we can do it, then let's just do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. So I will continue... Like continue to pray for you guys and to say push in love. That's imp so important. Push in love, push in purpose, push for yourself and push to keep on being unique. And don't let anybody or anything stop you. And yeah, that's my advice. Ah! <laughs> When's the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> the right things are going out probably soon. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, that means I gotta get a new hat, I gotta do my hair and all that stuff. <laughs> new boots. Is it new boots and new high ones and stuff like that? I'll be hosting. It's your girl Purpose. <laughs> Isn't it? No. It's been really, really amazing. I thank you for sharing your journey so far and we would love to have you back on air anyway to see how far you've got and an update on what's going on. And obviously I'll be in my wedding dress, you know. <laughs> no, but it's really been nice. And yeah. once again, thank, thank you so you. much, thank guys. And us. yeah, this is your girl Purpose. We Bye. out. <laughs> <laughs>